Right, guys. Yeah, as, as you know, I put a little video on before. Bit blustery, bit windy. Um, yeah, went fishing this morning. Uh, yeah, didn't didn't really do all too too well, but at least it, it you know beat the blank. Uh, yeah, ended up with a few whiting. Like I say, one of them pretty small. It were only about that big, something like that. Um, <laughs> he gave me a bloody slack line, and I was like. Eh! Yeah, and then got it in there, and I was like, what? "So yeah, yeah, it's all, it's all, yeah." Then got me, got me out, got me up early, got me out, and yeah, and like I said, uh, my rigs um, and baits, uh, black lug, tipped with uh, mackerel, and yeah, and me, my, uh, my rigs were is. A two up clipped and a one up clipped, uh, which I've got in my box here. So I'll just quickly pull the mess out and so I can show you this one quickly. Right, yeah, there it is. Yeah, as you know, the old uh, breakaway leads. I've used that one this time, but you know, I do use others. Use that one because of the. Uh, it's got the incorporated bait clip thing. Yeah, so top of my things, like I say, on my, my reels, I like the, uh, the the Trident Tackle Thermalink thing. I like, I like them on my reels. And, yeah, on my top of my rig, got small swivel don't let the size of that that's nearly 200 pound breaking strain on that small swivel so just keeping things small then i've got me crimp bead smaller swivel again it's a small one it's about 80 pound breaking strain on that one probably a bit too much for a snood but who cares uh, then i've got the old spring crimp which comes down where are you? Uh, yeah. just comes down to my hook which here we go I'll show you my hook hook length is oh yeah there's a little bit of rig tubing on the swivel to stop it hook length 20 pound amnesia tiny little bait stop thing there Moves under a bit of pressure and stop the bait flying up and down. And I've got my typical sort of setup. Bit of weed. Everybody likes a bit of weed, yeah. Like I say, these these rigs I use today. I've got sequins, little bead, another sequin, and then that hook. That hook's uh, an O2, quite fine wire, as you can see. I'm not a he-man. Hook bends out. This rig's gonna get cut up anyway and thing. So yeah, O2 mustard uh, Nordic bend, I think that one is. And then I got another crimp to which goes on to a the break your breakaway cascade swivel, which is the same setup on that hook length and that. Top one, I actually came across this making my rigs, and this is what I like doing now with like 90% of my two up clip rigs. I, I sort of I do do loop rigs every now and again, but I, I make this one now more. It's, it's a bit easier, less faffing about, if you know what I mean. Is yeah, and then it goes down onto clip and on the weight. And like I say, when the rig's all clipped up, it's should really get a cameraman, shouldn't I? But, you know, I'm trying to keep uh, costs down, you know, running costs down. Clips on uh, that, which clips on at uh, weight. And then when it uh, rig ejects, I've got the crimp there, I've got the swivel there, and then I've got another bead here. But the bead and the swivel, because there's no crimp underneath it, will just drop straight down. behind the weight so in in sort of 
a little bit of theory. It goes like a, like a loot rig. You know, you've got your one, you've got your one bait goes down below the the weight, and then you've got your one a bit further up. Now that's the uh, that was the two up one. Yeah. So all I did is I tied it rig off, and then when I went to crimp it all up, I realised, oh my word. I forgot another bloody crimp underneath, then I. So I thought, you know what? I'm not cutting that and that because it's all it was. It, you know, it was all set and and right. So I thought I'm not cutting that and then having to make it all again. So I, then I thought, oh, hang about when it clips off, boom, drops, and I thought I'll start doing that. You know what I mean? Right. Where's my other way? Yep. Oh, come here, yes, sausage. Right, so this is straight out of my box. Bit lazy. And there's me, me single up rig. Them again. I've gone off using pulleys because the ground that I'm fishing over isn't overly snaggy. So, you know, the pulley was designed for lifting when you get your fish. The weight of the fish pulls the lead up. So it's up and away from all the rocks and weed and stuff like that. It snags, which is good. But when you're fishing where I'm fishing, you know, the worst I've got to deal with is is some of the areas. There's a few, like, muddy ledges. And if you get the weight lifted up out of the way, you've got less chance of it cutting into le ledge. And the weight, you know, <coughs> wedging into ledge. But where I was fishing today, very little chance of that happening. Again, another small swivel. Crimp. And this one, I must have been feeling a bit flush with the old beads because I've gone 2-2. Two, two. And again, the old boink, boink, spring. I think that, that pound line 70. And I think it's ultra flex. It's either ultra, yeah, yeah, 70 pound ultra flex. And this one, it's 30 pound amnesia thing. Going down to top hook. And it's the Koiki Wide Mouth. There's uh, an old one, Koiki Wide Mouth, as, as the the top hook on the on the Pinel. And that one's an old two. And you know, like I say, yeah, the rigs are a bit mucky, but they're getting cut up. These hooks will go into a little pot. I save up a little pot of all my hooks, uh, and when it's full of old hooks and stuff like that. Gaffer tape it up, put it in the bin so it doesn't think, oh, my line goes into a big bag and when my bag's full, there's a couple of places in Morecambe I can take my line to get recycled and all my rig components. If I can use them again, I'll use them again. Or if they're looking a bit old and tatty, like I say, I save them up into a little pot and when the pot's a thing, boom, so it's, it's no choking hazard for any animals or out like that. Bit of a soft bugger in me old age. Well, yeah, yeah. And as well with my hooks, I put a slight little bend in the end. Like that, offset them, because, you know, the old thing with the uh, offset hooks is if you put it on the ground like that, it sits like that. And you pull it, you pull a straight ordinary hook back. It'll go, but when it's offset, ooh, it snags a bit better. I like doing that with my pinels. Just not a massive offset, just a little offset, and I do it on both of them. Yeah, and then it goes down to a the old splash down solo, which they're good. They're all right, but every now and again, do get stung a bit. I it's very very rarely it doesn't release which I think it's more to do with if I've had a big bait or something like that is a bit of bait because you know I've not left left the hook point or something properly clear and it's a bit of bait stuck in it and it's got it, got it wedged up or if the sand from a previous cast is stuck in it but one thing I have noticed with these things and uh, if anybody from Gemini is watching or out like that, every now and again, because when you put your weights in, you've got to do that. You've got to give it a little push. So your weight will come in and out. Push it back. 
but every now and then, and I'm not saying it happens all the time, but it has happened to me a couple of times, is I've been reeling in, and you feel the weight, and then all of a sudden, you're reeling and it'll come free, and you'll be like that, the hell, and your rig will come back, bloody weight's gone, and I, I don't know if you anglers are like me, you know, not one of these boys from North East who, who loses a ton of weights because that's the ground they fish on. But I get greatly upset when I lose we lose a weight. <sighs> really do. Yeah, that's one of one of the rigs that I use. As well, other bits of stuff that I like in my box or in my box. So I will do a video on this. Bit of wooden dowel. And it's one of the best ways to get a hook out of a flatty. Like I say, I will do a, a vid. I will do a vid of that later. And I do like my little shears, scissors, properly sharp for cutting up baits, soft baits like mackerel and stuff like that. You know, if you use a knife, sometimes your pull rips it apart. But like I say, these are all things I'm doing. Yeah. I will actually, now I've, I've touched base with that, I might actually, once I've tidied my docks out a bit because I don't want you to see my box while it's a bit shitty oh when it's a bit messy so what I'll do is I'll um I'll sort my box out I'll make sure it's all nice and clean and tidy and I'll set it up ready for a session and then I'll go through what's in my box for you if you if you fancy a video on that and like I say again whiting nobody wants to eat whiting so I'll swam back after giving it a bit of a kiss all right, Japs, right, catch us in a bit. And as I like to say, keep it, keep your fishing kiss. Keep it simple. That's all you got to do is keep it superly simple. Bye.